I still think the most likely uh, etiology of this pathogen in Wuhan was a, from a laboratory, um, you know, escaped. Uh, the other people don't believe that. That's fine. Science will eventually figure it out. It's not unusual for respiratory pathogens that are being worked on in a laboratory to infect the laboratory worker. These are two significant things to say, Dr. Redfield. And that's not implying any intentionality, you know. It's my opinion, right? But I am a virologist. I have spent my life in virology. I do not believe this somehow came from a bat to a human. And at that moment in time, the virus that came to the human became one of the most infectious viruses that we know in humanity for human to human transmission. Normally when a pathogen goes from a zoonotic to a human, it takes a while for it to figure out how to become more and more efficient in human to human transmission. I just don't think this makes biological sense. So in the lab, do you think that that process of becoming more efficient was happening? Is that what you were suggesting? Yeah, let's just say I have coronavirus that I'm working on. Most of us in the lab, we're trying to grow a virus. We try to help make it grow better and better and better and better and better and better so we can do experiments and figure out about it. I, that's, that's the way I put it together. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, of how a virus adapts itself to a efficient spread among humans. You know, one of them is in the lab, and one of them, which is the more likely, which most public health officials agree with, is that it likely was below the radar screen spreading in the community in China for several weeks, if not a month or more, which allowed it when it first got recognized clinically to be pretty well adapted. 